Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sharing my 38 and 39 week pregnancy updates. Wow, I can't believe we are already here. If you have not seen my other pregnancy updates, I have them spanning throughout this entire pregnancy. I will pop a link above to the playlist if you want to go check those out. So with each of these updates, I follow the same general structure just so that they're easy to compare one to the next. It is crazy, 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 but really, really exciting. So I have notes on my phone. I'm really into this like bluish periwinkle color right now, apparently, between um, my phone, my watch band, and this top. So baby is the size of, that's what I always start with. So in week 38, oh, she's kicking me right now. In week 38, she was the size of a small watermelon. And in week 39, she was the size of a honeydew melon. So getting very big and I am feeling it. <laughs> okay, so moving on to how I'm feeling overall. Things have shifted. 38 weeks was a week, the week of 38, when I was 38 weeks pregnant, um, I felt mostly really, really well and very energetic and um, lots of bursts of energy, lots of nesting, that sort of thing. And week 39 was different. Um, it was, it was, I'm, I'm like, what, tomorrow is 40 weeks for me, so week 39 um, has been like a shift, a definite shift. So it's hard because previous to this, pretty much I could kind of clump the weeks together, but they have been very distinctive. Um, and so in this 39th week, I've been a lot more nauseous. Um, feeling almost like that first trimester nausea again, where I just don't, I just feel queasy. Um, like I feel kind of queasy right now when I wake up in the morning. This morning I got up at like 4.30 or 5 and I just felt really, like I almost felt like I could go and vomit. Like I just felt really nauseous. And um, it really reminds me of that all day, you know, quote unquote morning sickness, which really just lasts all the time, um, of my first trimester which lasted actually to about 19 or 20 weeks for me. So um, that's been kind of interesting. I've been very crampy. So I've had those Braxton Hicks where my whole belly feels really tight. And then I've also had lower menstrual like cramps a lot, usually at night and sometimes in the morning. And they are not like trackable like a contraction would be. I can't tell you exactly when they start or when they stop. Just a lot of cramping, a lot of my body, I think, just revving up to give birth. Another thing that I touched on briefly is that nesting instinct that really swelled in week 38, and it has actually continued even though I'm not feeling quite so great here in week 39. Um, I'm still, I still have that nesting instinct. Like last night at midnight, I was like not really ready to go to bed yet. And so I <laughs> washed and sanitized all these bottles and pacifiers and things like that, you know, and it's like, I don't know if or when we're going to need these, but they're going to be all washed and cleaned, you know? So things like that have been just like, I've just felt this need to do those sorts of things, which has been sort of, um, sort of funny and definitely in line with that late pregnancy nesting instinct. Moving on to food cravings and aversions, apples have been the fruit of the past two weeks. I feel like every pregnancy update, all I do is tell you fruits that I crave because that has been my number one craving through pregnancy are sweet, cold fruits. Um, and so apples have been that for me, which makes sense because it's October and they're in season and they're really delicious right now. So I've been eating at least an apple a day, if not more than that. And um, those are great for energy and fiber and whatnot as well. Also apple cider, the drink, um, yum. I love apple cider. And now that it's out and it's easily, easily accessible, you know, I've been buying it and having a glass of that each day. Those have definitely been my cravings. Um, aversions, I have had a strong aversion to Asian food, like anything with sesame oil in it, anything with, um, I don't, I don't even know exactly what, what the exact flavor profiles are that I am averse to right now. But just last night, my husband asked me if I wanted to go um, to a Japanese restaurant in town 
which I normally love and I was not interested at all. That that just doesn't, something about that doesn't sound good to me. Um, but I will say that my appetite's been kind of goofy. I kind of feel like I've reverted back to that first trimester where I'm kind of nauseous and I'm really touch and go with food, but fruit I can do. And so I've been doing a lot of apples. All right, physical changes. Oh, we have had some physical changes. Um, one thing that's been interesting is that my fingers have gotten, they actually feel really good right now. They've gotten very stiff at the joints and just really achy. So I brought this up at my last appointment and I was told that it's really normal. Um, there's extra water in our tissue during pregnancy or something like that. And there's just, there's like a lot of different hand and wrist and finger things that can go down um, in pregnancy. Earlier in my pregnancy, I had this very bizarre symptom um, it's called Dacurvain something. Um, and some of you are like, yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. It's so painful. And it's like in, it's like inflammation here in the wrist, but it's also called uh, like colloquially people call it like nursing mother's wrist or mother's wrist or something like that. Because I guess, um, it happens a lot to women who are in late pregnancy and postpartum because of the swelling and, and the inflammation and whatever. So anyway, that's been really interesting and it feels better the past few days, but in week 38, it was really bad. Like I got in the shower and I couldn't open up a body scrub container. Like I, I was wanting to shave my legs and I like to exfoliate first and I like couldn't, I could not open this, the container and it wasn't even like the lid was on tight. My, I just couldn't grip it. Um, <clears throat> so that's been kind of weird, but there's nothing to be concerned about. It's just like, I don't have excessive swelling or anything like that. It's just that they're just stiff kind of stiff joints um, in my fingers. I also have had some nerve pain down the back of my leg. I think um, she is finally maybe starting to drop a little bit. I'm still very out of breath, so I know she hasn't dropped a whole lot, um, but maybe she's starting to shift downward just a little bit and sit on some nerves, because I've had some nerve pain. Um, I have also noticed that by the end of the day, my back feels very fatigued. So it feels, I, that's the best way to say it. it, feels very fatigued. It feels really tired. My muscles feel really tired by the end of the day of like carrying around <laughs> this big bump. I also got my first stretch mark on my belly. I was so frustrated. I've gone this whole pregnancy without having any stretch marks on my belly and I got a little squiggle above my belly button, but I really cannot complain because this belly has stretched so, so much and I was fully anticipating quite a lot of stretch marks because when I went through puberty and my body, my hips grew and everything else, I got a lot of stretch marks. And so I know that I'm predisposed to them and I was expecting to have a lot throughout my pregnancy and I just really haven't. But in these last few weeks with this belly just like bumping out, I think my body just can't keep up. So I did get my first little squiggle. It's like, like I said, right above my belly button and it's fine. It's, it's not a big deal. I've continued to deal with pretty bad varicose veins in my legs. They have not been great this whole pregnancy, and so I've been doing the best that I can treating them, but at the end of the day, they are related to the pressure and the blood volume increase, and my veins are just having a hard time keeping up. So that's been something that has conti that's been continual that I haven't mentioned um, over and over again. I mentioned it I think one time, and that has continued to be something that's not been a super fun, super fun symptom for me. Um, also, continuing to have heartburn from time to time, and um, that's not definitely not fun at all. I actually cannot stand that. It's one of the worst symptoms because it's just so frustrating. That feeling is just so awful. So I found some things that help me, but at the end of the day, it's related to pregnancy and all your muscles are relaxed. Plus you have a baby pushing up on everything. So not always the easiest with the um, heartburn and then breathing. That is the thing. I, I really am, to be honest with you, I'm not in the camp at least yet of feeling like I am completely done with being pregnant and I'm over it and I don't want to be pregnant over anymore. And I just like, I don't feel like that. I actually have really enjoyed these last few months of pregnancy and having a belly. And I just really have loved it to be honest with you. I, I feel like it's been a really positive experience. The lack of being able to breathe, however, has been horrific for me. It is it makes me feel very panicked because I feel like I'm being suffocated. 
that sounds extreme that's what it feels like so even I'm just sitting here and it's like I cannot get a deep breath I, I can't get a deep breath and when I lay down no matter how if I prop my head up if I, I've done it all I've done all of the things to do the reality is I have carried very high I have a very very short torso and the baby is like lodged in there and I can't I just cannot get a deep breath that one symptom has been probably outside of the nausea just the worst it is extremely frustrating and there are times like I said when it makes me feel very panicked because when you can't get a deep breath or at least when I can't get a deep breath that feeling of like not getting enough air it feels like I'm breathing through like a little straw sometimes I, I do not like it I, I really don't like it so although I'm not in the camp of like get this pregnancy over with I'm so over it I am really over the breathlessness and everybody says one day you'll wake up and she'll feel lower and then she'll be coming soon and then you'll have her and you can breathe again and I have to say I am so looking forward to that <laughs> I can't wait it's so hard to get through the day feeling out of breath all of the time all of the time as far as baby's movement it's continued to be strong very constant, very regular. It's funny, I can feel her fingers sometimes real low, like she has her hand up by her head or something, and I can kind of feel like little fingers down there, um, which has been funny. I've also felt her elbows a lot more lately, and they'll just jab out. And I feel that since she's getting bigger and bigger each week, I'm more able to identify where she is and what body part I'm feeling. And even sometimes she'll push her, her elbow out or her knee or her foot. And I, if I push back, she'll kind of push me back, which I really, it's really cute. So she's continued to do that. There was one time a couple of weeks ago where I was sitting on the couch and I I looked down and I thought at first it was just her wiggling around like she normally does. But looking at my belly, I could see my belly rising and falling like breathing. And it was bizarre. It was not hiccups. She has hiccups all the time and we all know what hiccups feel like and they're very jerky. And this was a very smooth rise and fall on my belly. And I was so weirded out by it. So I started Googling it, Googling it. And apparently it's called fetal breathing practice and they start practicing for breathing in the outside world and they start kind of like expanding and depressing their lungs and so I brought it up at my next appointment and I was told yep yeah, that's exactly what it is it's like this breathing practice that was very bizarre really cool but super bizarre it was like my and so I like held my breath for a second because I thought maybe I'm just seeing my own breath but even when I held my breath my belly would rise and fall it was really weird as far as sleeping, as she gets bigger and maybe shifts a little bit lower, there's extra pressure on my bladder. So sleep has not been as sound and I feel like I have to get up more to use the restroom. In addition to that, I am experiencing really, really extreme hot flashes throughout the night and they are rough. And so even when we have our air down low and I'm wearing something that's very lightweight and I am under no covers whatsoever and we have the fan on and so our room at Riley is like bundled up in fleeces and wearing all these clothes because he's ice cold freezing and I am laying there and I'm still just so overwhelmingly hot during the night. So I'll go into the kitchen and out of the freezer grab like an ice pack and put it on the back of my neck or you know wherever and that does help bring my body temperature down but only for a few minutes and then it will just it's just these hot flashes um, and I know that it's hormonal and I know that it's normal but it makes sleeping hard because it's, I'm just I'm uncomfortable you know so it, sleep has not been as sound between my bladder having pressure on it more more pressure on it and the hot flashes definitely sleep has not been quite so sound as it has been in prior weeks but I know that I'm just getting prepared for the multiple wake up calls that I will have throughout the night any day now um, <clears throat> but I'm still sleeping like I'm still doing an okay job with sleep it, it's you know I'm still getting some solid sleep each night I don't feel like I'm up all night long necessarily but it's not extremely sound sleep either. I'm also apparently, according to my husband, snoring super loudly, which is funny because I have never been a snorer. And he's he's been cracking me up lately because typically when I when I'm not pregnant, 
I lay down in bed, I find a comfortable position, and I fall asleep. And he jokes that it's like I'm like a rock. Like I do not move throughout the night. I do not toss and turn. I don't, I don't, I just don't move. Like I, my body falls asleep and that's the end of it. I don't snore. I'm just silent and still the whole night long. And, um, he, so he's like, sharing a bite with you is so easy. You just are over there doing that. Well, it's been a whole different story, especially recently. I'm up and down. I'm hot. I'm getting cold packs. I'm using the restroom. I'm tossing and turning. I have pillows between my knees. I'm like, need all the covers off and then I get freezing cold and it, I, it's like a hot mess. And so, um, all of that plus now I'm snoring apparently super loudly Obviously, I've not heard it because I'm asleep when that's happening, but I've never snored before, but my, I, I've mentioned before that my sinuses have felt super inflamed throughout this pregnancy and um, just feel, they just feel inflamed. So with that, I'm sure that's contributing to the snoring. So I am just really, truly a hot mess when it comes to bedtime. <clears throat> All right, moving on to new purchases. I do, I have a new purchase this week that I am super, super, or in these two weeks, that I'm really, really excited about and excited to share. So this is something that I have had my eye on um, for years, for years and years. I have had my eye on this particular book, and this is the Emily Lay Baby Book. And like I said, even before, well before I got pregnant, I have always had my eye on it and have known that this was the baby book that I wanted for our baby. <clears throat> my mom kept a very detailed baby book for me, and I have it actually in my, I'm in my office right now, it's in my office closet, and I regularly, multiple times a year, I pull it out and look through it, and I cherish it so much, and I wanted to give that same gift to my child, and I thought this book was so beautiful, and I love it that it's super simple, so here's what it looks like. It says, The Story of You, and she has this available in, um... I think a blue, a pink, I don't know if there's like a mint color, but there's definitely a blue and a pink um, color. <clears throat> and I'll just show you a couple of the pages. We have not fully completed, I need to, it's actually on my to-do list. I have a to-do list that's like to do before the baby arrives. And one of the things is that I wanna go through and fill this out. But I did get the photos printed, which was a big feat. So like here on this page is mommy and daddy's story. And so I got a wedding picture of us. And then this page is like more about my pregnancy. So I have a bump shot and some, um, you know, up here it's like a little fill in. And then there's like some pages where you can just put pictures of your growing belly and she has little prompts for everything. So we have all of that. There's um, like one of my baby shower invitations. There's a page for that and then and I have photos from that baby shower, my Maryland baby shower, which was so stunning. And then the same thing, um, let me turn, from my Texas baby shower, which was wonderful and some pictures from that as well. <clears throat> And then, I've, like I said, I've done all the pictures I need to go through them, right? Then this is like a letter to you. So I have pictures from the day that we found out we were pregnant. And um, let me see. Does this have anything on it that I don't want to show? Okay. So then this page is really cute. This is like our predictions for you. And so Riley filled it out and then put, put post-it notes over his. And then I filled it out. Um on my own you know and then we compared our answers and it was really cute to see all the little things that we predict for her in her life and um yeah it's just really cute to think about and then here we are we're into like where it's the baby's first photo and things like that so we obviously haven't done that yet so I've gotten the pictures for the first part of the book, which was um, actually time consuming, going through and figuring out which pictures I wanted and getting the correct sizes ordered and, and getting them all into the book. Um, but I'll leave a link to this below if you're interested. It's it's really like an heirloom. I think it's like 60 bucks or something. It's not inexpensive by any stretch of the imagination, but I've had my eye on it for years and I know how much I cherish my baby book and my baby book is like the 90s version of that. <laughs> <laughs> the 1991 version of that book is basically what mine is um, and I just love it so much and I knew that it would be wor a worthwhile investment so I do need to go through and write out those beginning first few pages and then um, once she arrives we'll add more and more and more and they the book goes all the way through I think um, 
I think five years old. And then she has, um, the woman who sells it, Emily Lay has, she calls it the big kid book. So there's the baby book and then the big kid book. I think that's like six through 12, age six through 12. So if you want to keep kind of documenting in that way, you can. So that's my big new purchase in the past week. And, um, I'm really looking forward to getting that all set up for her so that she'll have that for the rest of her life. Um, I, I love mine so much and I know that Riley loves his and it's just baby books are special. The last thing is what I'm most focused on this week and I wrote nesting and resting. My due date is here just in a couple of days at the time of filming this. Um, by the time this goes up I think my due date will be passed and so she could come anytime now. She could come anytime now which is very wild and very very exciting. <sighs> very wild. <laughs> I really am really excited. I am, there's a, a little bit of a sad, I don't deal with transition very well always, and I definitely have a little bit of a sadness of not being pregnant anymore, which has been surprising to me because obviously pregnancy is a means to an end, which is the end is to get a baby and to have a baby in my arms, which is something I've wanted and desired for so many, I mean, for my whole life and especially for the past couple of years. And so it's a, it's been kind of interesting to me that I've had a little bit of a sadness. Like when I get dressed in the morning with my big bump, which I'll show you in a minute, I'm, I always think like, oh, this is going to go away, you know? And I just, I, there's a little bit of a sadness about that, but obviously once she comes, I'm not going to wish that I was pregnant with that, you know, it's just been kind of a weird it's a weird time, you know, sort of transitioning f from being fully into, you know, pregnancy to now I'm like, okay, we have baby stuff around our house and everything's getting washed and cleaned and sanitized and laundered and like, it's really getting real. And so I'm having to kind of like sort through that and it's a lot to process, but I'm really excited. I'm really feeling great about birth. I'm feeling very confident and very peaceful and calm. I feel like I have such a great support team between Riley and my doula. And I just feel really good about that. Um, which I think is really helpful having like a very relaxed mental state going into it. So if you are the praying type and you want to pray for us as we anticipate her arrival and anticipate labor and birth, we would appreciate those prayers so much that things would go smoothly. One thing that we are hoping and praying for is that my mom is planning on being at the birth if she can get here. <laughs> so if you would pray for that as well, um, that's something that we are really hoping that I'm able to, she has a job that requires her to jet set all around. And so with that in mind, we are planning on contacting her at the first sign of labor. So even like very, very early labor where things are not consistent, we plan on calling her and she plans on canceling her, you know, clearing her schedule and getting to the airport and getting here to Dallas. Um, but we both realize that depending on the day, the time, what flights are available, where in the country she's located, like we totally know that it could or could not happen, but it's something we're really praying for. I'd really love if she could be here. So if you would pray for a smooth delivery, smooth labor, um, the safety and health of me and the baby and pray that um, my mom would be able to make it in time, we would appreciate those prayers so, so much. <clears throat> I really look forward to updating you once she's here. As I said in my previous video, that will be on Instagram first. I'm sure I will share her here on YouTube shortly after her birth, but shortly might be two to three weeks, whereas on Instagram it might be more like two to three days after she's born. So um, a friendly reminder to please not badger me <laughs> on Instagram and ask me every day whether or not I've had her. I will share when she has come and arrived for sure. I promise I will share that with you. I've been on Instagram some days a lot and some days a little, so don't read into that too much. It, like this weekend, I wasn't on at all, but that was just because I was sleeping. I'm still very pregnant. So before we go, let me pop in a bump shot. You can see she's big and um, she's growing and growing and growing, but I they're still guessing that she's like six and three quarters or seven pounds. I don't know. Those guesstimates are, can be so far off. So who even knows, but that's kind of what they're guessing. So we'll see how big she actually is. She feels huge to me, but I guess that's kind of where their, their guesses are. So anyway, 
Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I would love to hear from you as always and hear how you're doing in the comments below. If you are also pregnant, if you've recently given birth, just like whatever you want to share, I would love to read. I will see you guys soon, maybe with a 40 week update. Maybe the 40 week update will be that the baby is here. We will totally have to see. So anyway, thank y'all so much for watching. Talk to you soon. Bye.